you got a chance to study under Sheikh Murabit al Hajj, right? And he is known to be probably the best type of traveler. That's why he got that name, right? Mm. Can you tell us a little bit about that, inshallah? MashaAllah, both of us had the honor of, of uh, at least for a small amount of time, uh, studying and, 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 and getting du'as from, from Murabit, Murabit al Hajj. Uh, is, he's known as Murabit al Hajj over here. In Mauritania, usually they call him al Hajj al Fahfu. Yeah. Uh, Fahfu is like the nickname of his great grandfather, who was also a great alim. The reason they call him Al-Hajj is because he made Hajj on foot. Uh, um, how long ago did he make it? We don't know for sure, but we do know that he he remembers hearing the announcement regarding the fall of the caliphate while he was in Makkah Mukarramah as a as a, as a teenager, maybe 17, 18 years old. And uh, he made Hajj on foot through the overland route and he came back. I heard that he went in a, a qafila in a caravan of uh, so, uh, somewhere more than a dozen people from his locality, and he's the only one who made it back. And, and he's still alive, right? And he's he's he is still alive. How old is he now, Ron? Uh, he is over a hundred years old. We don't know for sure how old he is, but he's over a hundred years old. And I thank Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for for the presence of such people in this world. And I fear I fear what barakat will 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 be uh, snatched away if you know such people Allah Taala takes them back. Uh, he literally trained four uh, uh, generations of alpha, like alpha dawn scholars in Mauritania. Uh, the first generation of his students have almost all died themselves. There's very <laughs> few of them left. Uh, uh, Murabid Ahmed Fal is one of them. There's very few of them left. Uh, Haddamin is, is one of them. Um, Allah Ta'ala keep them, you know, keep them, preserve them as well. Mm -hmm. Very I mean. incredible people as well. But uh, um, he is, he, he is uh, a person... How do we say there's a, a term used in the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, and in the Quran uh, regarding a, a person of piety and righteousness to the point where they have uh, reached a special maqam with Allah Ta'ala that such and such person is a wali of Allah. And I always thought that this is a very novel idea that somebody reaches such a high high maqam with Allah Ta'ala that Allah Ta'ala says that I become the eye with which he sees and the ear with which he hears and the hand with which he grasps. Ila akhir al-hadith, that's the hadith of, it's a hadith of Sahih Bukhari, hadith Qudsi narrated in Sahih Bukhari. Uh, I thought that this was something, very theoretical piece of knowledge until I saw him. And uh, I saw that this man is 24 hours a day there all he does is he sits and he faces the qibla and recites quran all day uh -huh. and if there's a lesson you want to take he'll like drop out for a minute teach you your lesson and then he'll go back to reciting quran and doesn't really say much more than that the only thing i saw him is other than teaching a lesson he reads his salat and he uh um will say wa alaikum salam because it's a sharia obligation and uh, uh he will uh, uh maybe every now and then you'll hear him reciting some uh, verses from the Qasida Burda or giving dua to somebody who asks.